So uh, good afternoon, everyone, and I'm really honored to be here, and I'm really happy to to just share to you um, the fantastic work we're doing with Tala. So I want to start my talk with Rowena. I know everyone talked about financial inclusion today, but right now I just want to focus on the customer that we are really trying to help. So she's uh, 35 years old. She's married. Uh, she has two kids, and she's very, very busy, really, of uh, taking care of her side business. Because there are times when you know when you're just depending on one income in the house, you need to do some side business on the side so you can supplement it. On days that she's, uh, you know, her sales are good, um, you know, everything's fine. She can provide for her kids. But when there are days where you know there's like a typhoon, um, there's like really there are no customers coming to her store, she would really, um, you know, try to do her best effort to get credit, no matter you know what the cost. So she would go to a bank, and the bank would say, "Oh, you don't have." documentation, you don't have enough income, so she's declined. She would go to her family and friends. Sometimes they would say yes, sometimes you know, they would say no. So imagine that situation, so she needs credit. Now, that question, now I'm gonna put everyone to the audience, right? So imagine yourself sitting right there right now, enjoying your coffee, and you guys are you know, just having a nice chat, or at least listening to me, and then she comes up to you, taps your shoulder, and asks this question. Ma'am, sir, can I please uh, borrow some money? Pwede ba humiram ng pera sa inyo? Um, I really need it, need it to, to really cover a gap in my budget, and I'd really appreciate it if you can just you know, spare me some cash. Um, I promise I'll pay you back. So it's 10,000 pesos, okay? So can I see, just uh, you know, raise your hands. Who would here would pull out their wallet and give cash to her right now? So I just see one here, this gentleman. Um, I'll talk to you after this uh, talk. <laughs> I have some business ideas. I'm just kidding. Um, well, as expected, not a lot, right? I mean, very, just one guy out of like, this room, probably like a 0.01% probability. <laughs> and, and the reason is because she's a stranger. Right? Growing up, like my parents embedded in me. I think all kids, you know, when, you, when we're all young, don't talk to strangers. Baka kidnap ka or you, know, you might get kidnapped or something or just don't trust them. And you know, there's a lot of um, wisdom in that saying because you know, when you deal with strangers, you don't really know what to expect, right? And, what, and what, when, that, when that happens, what feeling sets inside you? Skepticism, fear. And when you're afraid, you can't really trust the person. Probably next to impossible. So that's Rowena. That's Rowena's world. She's not trusted. She's a stranger. From the perspective of the financial system, she can't be trusted. And you know what's more interesting? She's not alone. So globally, this is the market for the unbanked. A lot of people talked about unbanked today, this morning. We talked like, you know, unbanked, financial inclusion. But what is it really in terms of numbers? It's 3 billion. 3 billion people around the world that right now doesn't have access to traditional finance or credit. And out of that 3 billion, there's a staggering number, even more impressive. It's $2.1 trillion in unmet credit needs, right? So. You know, I'm, I'm a business person, right? I look at 3 billion people, $2.1 trillion market opportunity, why don't I jump in the game? Like banks would be the first one to be supposed to get in there. But you know, just to clarify, banks, is, you know, banks are financial institutions. I came from a bank, like I work for Citibank. You know, we're, we're not really agnostic or we're not really like aversive of, oh, on bank, I don't want to touch that. You know, typically, you don't have an allergic reaction. And the biggest block right now because Traditional lenders cannot lend to them. It's really financial information. Information, identity, you, don't, you can't really rely on the information that is provided by this unbanked market. And you know, that information is critical because that information will now form part of um, you know, um, a risk, a risk assessment objectively. So you know, it's really, in a nutshell, it's really your credit score. Um, I did credit scoring a lot in Citibank and you know, it's, you could think about it in different ways, but I want to show you what a credit score actually looks like. You know, um, I came from the US, but for those people here in the Philippines, it's very new. This is a credit score. So what is it exactly? In a nutshell, it's really just a number that measures a person's credit worthiness. So what it, what it does is that, um, you know, depending on your number, banks would submit um, data or financial data about you, about the credit, your credit history, and would typically submit like um, five types, new credit, credit products, credit history, amount owed, and payments. Oh, oh by the way, this, uh, 
There are many types, right? But this is the what you call a FICO score. This is developed by Experian. So this is their, well, this is their published um, like weighted uh, way of uh, calculating a credit score. Now, depending on the score output, if you get a low score, then you will be considered as a bad or poor borrower. S um, similar to what you see right here for 650 and below. For everything above that, you know, trust me, if you get a 650 or at least a 700 in the U.S., banks will, you know, traditional lenders would open the, you know, the red carpet for you. Yeah, you can get all the products that you want in the world. So that's the credit score. It's so important because it's now considered as a measurement of your financial identity. I want you to remember those words, financial identity. Because as far as the lender is concerned, you're a stranger. But if you give me a credit score, that opens the gates you know, to heaven, something like that. Um, you can get any pr product that you want. It actually determines what products, what interest rates, what terms you can get from a traditional lender. So let's go back in the case of Rowena. Why can't we just give her you know, a credit score, right? And you know, get financial inclusion started. Well, it's easier said than done because it's really, really, really tough and hard for her. Go to a bank right now or any traditional lender and you know, this is the biggest block right now. Everything in the middle is what you call traditional data. They would you know, ask you this, I won't go through the list, but you can really see in the screen, but what do you notice about them? They're complex, they're very um, hard to understand, it's very time consuming, and worst of all, it requires a lot of documentation. Let me repeat that, documentation. So. I'm Rowena right now, or at least put yourself in Rowena's shoes. They come into a bank and then they throw you this list of our processes and documents. What would you feel? Defeated, intimidated, and especially excluded. And this is the reason why there's such a huge you know, problem right now for financial inclusion because of this, everything here in the middle. And you know, putting in Rowena's shoes again, <clears throat> I wanna think if I'm Rowena, there has to be a better way at least give me a chance to build my own credit score. So, this is why Tala was born. So, Tala is, um, thank you Richard for the introduction, it says it's based in Santa Monica. Um, it's a startup founded by our founder, Shivani Shiroya. She started out as an investment banker and then moved on to um, United Nations for Development Work. Um, in Africa, while she was spending time there, she heard countless of stories similar to Rowena's about financial exclusion, hard to get documents to provide for banks, like lack of um, you know, financial access. And what she realized that financial inclusion, although you may have different understandings about it, is really a data problem. Uh, I repeat that, it's really a data problem. Data that we don't know anything about Rowena, about the rest of the unbanked market. And if we could unlock the data, if we could get somehow data around the customer, then well, then and only then you can actually have a chance of you know, understanding risk. So, <clears throat> so that was the uh, story of Tala and then that's when we were born. So we were born about five years ago and we haven't looked back since. And we've expanded in five markets within that time. So we're now we're in Mexico, uh, Tanzania, Kenya, India, and now in the Philippines. So what is our vision? Our vision is really, in a nutshell, Building financial identities, that's our business model. We wanna start with financial identities. Once you have financial identity, then you will have the ability to actually have um, access to a financial system and you have choice and control. But you know, going back to the, the, the mission, it's, it's, it, I know it's very like a, a little like high up there, but how do we actually do it? Well, for us, we wanna do three things, and this is um, you know, very critical in our execution. How do we actually implement this vision? Number one, we want to meet where the customers are. And number two, we want to use um, alternative data and the most advanced uh, machine learning techniques right now in data science to build our credit scores. And number three, you know, we want to provide a seamless experience. We're dealing with the unbanked market, they have so much going on in their lives and you know, the last thing you want to ask them to do is like, comply with a lot of like, processes and regulations, right? So, let me unpack those three points right now. First one, work with what customers have. Remember Rowena, right? She wants to apply for credit and then she has to go through this very complex paperwork, documents, and you know, whatnot. Ask any guy right now in the street. Ask them, what do you have right now with you? Three things. I have a smartphone, I have a social media account, 
and have an ID. That's it. So this is a much more powerful starting point, right? Because if you work with what the customers have, then you build rapport up front. You build trust. You're also building trust from your side, and you may, you're already saving them the, the hassle of going through a very lengthy process. So you want to work with this, and then, and you know, I've, I've listened to the earlier speakers, just with the smartphone alone, like with mobile data, you can really learn a lot about the customer. You can actually generate a lot of what you call alternative data, which I'll get into uh, just shortly. And what's most important is that that alternative data is not fixed, right? It's not like stuck in a paper, someone submits your financial information. That's dynamic, it's live, and it will grow over time. I read a survey, how many hours does a typical adult right now spends you know, with a smartphone? Eight hours, nine hours. You know, I'm a father, so I can imagine like, if I could spend eight hours with you know, my kids, that would be more awesome. But you know, right now, we're spending mo most of our time, our data, with a smartphone. So that is the perfect starting point of um, understanding customer behavior. Moving on to the second point, alternative data and machine learning. Before it gets uh, confusing, right? Let's start first with the word alternative data. I want to spend some time or use this opportunity to kind of um, dive into each of those terminologies. Alternative data. Remember traditional data earlier? Banks are requiring or traditional lenders? Um, so that's traditional data. <laughs> alternative data is probably pretty much everything outside of it. It's a very big universe. One example of alternative data is really mobile data. I already put up here some examples. Probably uh, a contact list on your phone, geolocation. Everybody uses Waze here or, or Google Google Maps. Um, frequency by which you call someone, ID types, um, payments you made over the phone, and other mobile data. So that's uh, alternative data. Second piece is machine learning. Um, I know there's some data scientists in the room. Um, well, my wife is in data analytics, but what's important about machine learning is that you know it's not really. You, 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 don't, you don't want it to be more compl complicated than it is. It's, it's, it's actually a, another fancy word for statistics. So <laughs> machine learning, uh, I'm going to try to simplify it right now. It's really statistics applied on past data, and you derive uh, trends or pro you know, patterns out of that data. And then what you do is you combine that into an algorithm, and that algorithm can be used to predict a future event. So those are the five buzzwords, right? Statistics. Um, past data, trends, um, and then you have um, algorithm, and then a future event. So if you get stuck with a data scientist in an elevator, you don't understand what he's saying, he's probably talking about one of those five things. So let's put it in all in an example so it's uh, going to be more a little concrete. So let's say Rowena applies to Tala, and we saw from her phone that she has like only one contact. So that's already indicative of either she's a fake person or it could be indicative of fraud, right? She probably just got some phone and then applied on the fly. But if we see from her you know, phone that she has a healthy list, a long list of um, contacts and she communicates with them regularly, then that's already indicative of a good behavior in the future. What machine learning does is that it uses that one data point and then it will extract other probably thousands of data points Combine that into an algorithm and spit out a number, and voila, that's a credit score. So that's, you know, that's how we understand. We went around, um, we, we work with what they have, and then we generate a credit score. So that's the beauty of machine learning. Um, it's really the ability to peek into the future. I know I've talked about machine learning, alternative data, mobile data, but none of that would really matter today, especially to Rowena if it cannot deliver on a seamless experience. So that this brings me to my last point. Seamless experience. So anyone can just say seamless experience, customer experience, we're passionate about customer experience, but what is it really? For Itala, it's very simple. You want to deliver an end-to-end -end solution or platform at the palm of your hands. You're providing us your data from your phone, then let's deliver everything via phone. So this is our workflow right now for Tala. You can uh, download our app via Google Play Store. You submit all of your information in the, app, in the same app again, within the app. You submit just one ID, only one ID. We were not going to require any other outside that, just one ID. And that one ID, you just need to take three photos. Take photo of the front, the back, 
and then take a selfie with it. People love taking selfies, so might as well just take one. Submit everything again through the app, and then if you get approved by a credit model, then you will receive your loan. So we, right now we start with 1,000 pesos because that's how we want to get um, our first uh, customers uh, onboarded to us. Um, and then you can cash out in three ways. You can cash out via a mobile wallet. If you have a bank account, then you can actually deposit it there, or you can do a Padala Center. So that's it, end-to-end -end solution. It's seamless because no other paperwork, no documentation, no verification, no calls, no background checks, no nothing. Just in the app, just that four steps, and you're good to go. So sounds too good to be true, right? So the question now is, uh, does the business model work? I'm very happy to share to you guys today that um, just a few weeks ago, we celebrated our you know, one millionth customer. So this is very impressive because this is a, a goal that we set out for ourselves. And um, you know, in just a year, this is what we have achieved. And in, in this one million customers, this is what we have seen so far. Um, well, we were able to disperse 4.6 million loans. We orig originated about $250 million. And um, just to support what the earlier speakers say, the unbanked actually repay. Our, we have a healthy repayment rate of 92%. Um, repeat rate of 95% and we're getting high marks across all our customer experience. You have high NPS scores and we have high app ratings. So that's, that's a business model right now. And what this number means is that, you know, we're actually making an impact today. That this impact, even if it's just a fraction of the 3 billion market that I just mentioned earlier, if it's just a million, it only means that there's so much exciting work ahead of us, ahead of Tala, you know, and I guess everyone for this room as well. So let me go back to Rowena. In closing, I, I just want to pause and let's just kind of think about, you know, what we're really trying to do here. Um, Rowena is really the reason why we're in this business. She's the reason why Tala was founded and pretty much this is the reason why a lot of the startups in this room are also, you know, have started their business because everyone wants to solve Rowena's problem. And for us at Tala, financial inclusion, it doesn't get any more clearer than, you know, you should build a financial identity. When you give a person a financial identity, that's the only time that you actually put the power in their hands to be able to access and control and provide choice in their financial lives. <clears throat> so, so when life gets hard, Rowena doesn't have to go back to the coffee shop anymore in this room and ask you for, you know, 10,000 pesos. She's already, you know, she already has an identity. She already has access. She's already empowered. And she can make a choice to help her family today and to grow her business. That's Tala. That's our mission. And that's what we hope to achieve in the Philippines and for the rest of the world. Thanks for listening and have a good afternoon.